You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, From Los Angeles, California, and Maria Menounos, and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies, this is AfterBuzz TV Spotlight On. Spotlight On is a long-form interview series featuring actors and TV personalities. And now, from the world's number one TV after-show platform, this is AfterBuzz TV Spotlight On. Hi everyone, welcome to another Spotlight On. I'm Ashley Daniels, hosting today. I have an interview with a very special guest today. His name is Nick Hism, and he is a singer. He is, he just graduated college from UPenn. He is a model. He's kind of a multi-talented everything. Nick Hism, hello. Hi, Introduce you? yourself. Hi, uh, everyone, I'm Nick, I'm, I'm 21 years old, and I'm happy to be here. Awesome, I'm happy to have you. Very cool. So. Uh, first of all, you have a lot going on, but a lot of your fans would like to know a little bit more about you, who, who Nick Hism is. What, you come from London. Yes. Moved here when you were 18? Yes, I moved to uh, Philadelphia when I was 18 for school to go to UPenn, and uh, I was commuting back and forth to New York while I was modeling, and uh, I also grew up in Switzerland a little bit uh, when I was 15. All right, so what was it like moving from London? To here was that it was a bit of a culture shock. For was it sure. New York? For, oh, you, uh, you, well, or did you go Philly right to Philly? New York. Okay. Yeah, between the two. Um, I guess it was a big culture shock. You know, uh, I'd never really been around American college life before. Uh, I'd never been to a fraternity party. Uh, you know, the red cups and everything. That was interesting to see. Uh, it was a big adjustment, though, for sure. Yeah. And yeah. did you did you come by yourself? That's big. That's a bold move. You came yeah. actually just by yourself. No friends, no family. Not really. Wow. That's Not awesome. Really. Good for you. What yeah. did you study at UPenn? History and anthropology. Oh, my goodness. Do you think you'll ever use it at any point? Mm, I don't know. It's good it, to it, fall back on. It's weird to go from, you know, history and anthropology at UPenn to uh, music in, uh, in Los Angeles. It's totally a different field of, you know, of work and of interest. So people are usually shocked when I say I studied history and anthropology because they think I studied at least music or, or acting or drama or something, but yeah. Right. So speaking of that, you actually, when was the first time you felt like, you know what, I'm here, I'm paying attention in class, but I'm daydreaming of being a singer. Did that ever happen? <laughs> yeah, all the time. Really? All the time, yeah. Well, I had to work a lot. Um, right. There's a surprising amount of paperwork that goes into being a singer, um, just scheduling studio sessions and, you know, uh, writing songs and everything else. So I'd usually be in class and I'd get inspired by something and start typing away in class. And, uh, you know, sometimes you just got to do that. So No way. Yeah. So you would start typing, what would you start typing? You well, just, just song lyrics or oh, I'd be emailing okay. my managers or, you know, emailing somebody like, can we do a session this weekend or booking flights to LA while I'm in class. Um, you know, it, it wasn't good. You should always pay attention, but sometimes yeah. I... Especially at UPenn. Yeah, I mean, I I'm sure that's not easy, not yeah. paying attention and trying to get... Did you, did you do well, though? I did, I Your did. Your grades didn't get sacrificed too no, much? No, not at all. I, uh, I had about a 3-3 most of the semester and then I made uh, the dean's list once or twice. Good for you. Yeah. Did but, you do um, any extracurriculars while you were there? Not really. No. I kind of looked at it in the way that, you know, if I was in a singing extracurricular class or a drama extracurricular class or photography, I was sort of already doing those things, but on a professional level and on a, you know, different stage. So I thought it was very cool to kind of do the real thing. So, uh, you know, being in the studio with certain producers was my singing extracurriculars or uh, being in a photo shoot was at my it was my photography extracurricular kind of thing. So I still feel like I got a well-rounded um, extracurricular education between history and everything else, but I wasn't involved in any student activities, unfortunately. Do you regret that a little bit? or mm, not, not really, because uh, like I said, I was doing all the same things just on a sort of real world level, which was cool. But uh, I do wish that I'd been able to, you know, interact with my peers who are also in music uh, at UPenn, because there's a great music community there. Um, and I wish I had been able to immerse myself a little bit more in that, but uh, maybe now that I'm in LA, there's some Penn alumni here that I can link up with. Oh, that's great. Good yeah. for you. So you, you also model. Yes. Do you, now, did you put that on the back burner for a little bit? Or um, tell us a little bit about your modeling career. When did you start modeling? And, and I started modeling. I got scouted off of Facebook when I was only 16 no years old. Way. Yeah. 
16. Was and, that a little um, scary? Like, were you like, is this a real person? Is this a creepy, you I know, know, I was like, who, where who, am I going? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, my first photo shoot, I had my dad take me. I was a little bit okay. nervous, obviously. Um, but yeah, it worked out very fun, and I loved doing it. And I moved to New York when I was 18, so to do it full time, and also obviously in school. And I uh, started working with Kaizi Feng. He's an amazing photographer. Shoots for, you know, Vogue, Vanity Fair. No way. Uh, Burberry. Awesome. So I kind of became his really good friend. He's still one of my best friends today. But I started being put in a lot of his different projects. And then from there, I got picked up by Tommy Hilfiger. Um, so that was great fun. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's an, a huge accomplishment. I give you a lot of credit. A lot of people your age, if they, if they got a modeling career and they were working with Tommy Hilfiger, they would say, it's college. Who needs college? Right. So the fact that you still had a drive to not just go, but do the work is impressive. Right. You should give yourself, you know, it's, it's a big accomplishment. Well, thank you. It's really cool, though. And so do you <laughs> think you'll want to dabble in that in L.A.? Because now, yeah. well, mm -hmm. it's official. You have moved to L.A. You're yes. Here. This is your home. This is home. This as is of, home. As of two days ago. Three oh. days ago, maybe. Well, welcome. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> You're a Californian now. <laughs> I know. It, it's a shame. I, I want to go to the beach, but I spent most of my time in Target and Ikea. I know. We had a furniture. conversation when you were at Target. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Target's oh, yeah, a dangerous place. Oh, yeah, you called me place. on the phone while I was at Target. I yeah. did. It's a dangerous place. I went to Target for paper towels. I came home with rollerblades. Uh -huh. It's not an easy <laughs> You get sucked in. Every aisle sucks you in. Yeah. And I you bought went to the my, one uh, I bought my furniture, groceries, uh, literally everything at Target, and I spent about four hours there, and I kept on going back to the same checkout clerk. His name was Steven, and he kept on looking at me like, dude, you must be kidding me right now. You're, you keep on coming back here, and, and you have like different items from different sections of the store every single time. It was oh ridiculous. My, you should do a Target ad. I guess I know. your Target's like number <laughs> I know, one. Right? right? <laughs> yeah, you get everything there. But you have moved to L.A. now, and do you think you'll do any modeling while you're in L.A., or are you going to focus mainly on your music? Well, right now the focus is music. Okay. Um, I will still probably sign up to a modeling agency but based out of New York um, and I'll probably do something more special booking so that I don't have to go to castings all the time and I'll just be able to work with uh, you know people that I'm familiar with like Kai or uh, other magazines and clients from before that uh, that I have good relationships with and I'll just be able to do that and uh, but right now music is the focus for sure and congratulations you just signed with reindeer entertainment Thank Larry you. Uh, Rudolph's company it's Thank a huge you. deal <laughs> and they rep if you don't know this is the biggest management company and they represent Britney Spears Avril Lavigne uh, Miley Cyrus yeah so that's a that's a really big accomplishment once again thank you and I'm very excited about what that. does that feel like when you're being represented by a company that represents people in that category does it does it scare you or does it motivate you well I think it motivates me uh, enormously because you want to reach their level of success and be you know as big of a star as everybody else on the roster and uh, you know it's it's also very exciting to have access to people like Britney Spears and Miley Cyrus and all the people that they work with from, you know, writing standpoint, production, uh, all the fun events that they get to go to, the different people that they get to, you know, be with on a daily basis are great people. So I'm very excited to, you know, work with Reindeer and Larry and Rebecca and the whole team there. So it's fantastic. Shout out to Tara. Shout out to Tara as well. <laughs> Tara's here right now. <laughs> so cool. So, okay. Your music video, If I Die Young. Yes. We're gonna play it. I'll play it. In, we'll play it in a minute. I just wanted to ask you first. It was to give a little understanding to the viewers and listeners. This is your first single. Yes, first ever single. Okay. And what was the inspiration behind this music video? Not just the music itself, but the video. Did you? Was the concept? Was that your idea, or was that um, something that you collaborated with? Because it's a really cool video. Right. Well, thank you. <laughs> I'm glad you liked it. <laughs> I did. Um, you know, the concept for the video was sort of, uh, and the song itself was kind of like a live for the moment, uh, you know, song. And that's kind of, you know, the lyrics are, are sort of about that. It's like you have to live each day as if it's your last and take advantage of all these amazing opportunities and, and you know, all these great people around you. And so, you know, one of the most powerful things in life is obviously love. And so the concept for the music video was let's make it about love, get this beautiful girl. Girl, Alyssa Arce, she's uh, Miss July for Playboy, she's fantastic, and uh, it was really just kind of a love story and fun and being with her and this idea of it's just me and her in the desert with really nobody else, and you're sort of going off of this idea that you don't really care what's going on because you're just going to enjoy everything about the moment, and you don't need anybody else, so you're it. there together. 
Let's play a little clip from the video if we uh, get that up. I loved it. I, I, I thought it was great. It, it's, it really does, uh, if you're going to pick a first song to release, that's a great one for you because it really does symbolize how you view your life. Yes. You've done so much at such a young age, and I think it's, I think that's how you live each day. You don't really right. waste a day. You're no. not even going to go to the beach. Yeah. You're in California. It's 90 degrees. Yeah. You're like, I got work. I got to do work. I got to do work. I love that, that yeah. inner fire that you have. So Thank you. Speaking, okay, so I just wanted to give everybody an understanding. So the, the the single, you can get it on YouTube, you can also buy, I mean, you can watch it on YouTube, you can buy it on iTunes. Yes. And it was number, let's see, it was in, it was national, number one in Turkey. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. And it was top 40 in the U.S. Uh, on top 40 radio in the U.S. Yeah. And uh, yeah, you performed it in Europe and the U.S. while promoting the song. So what did that, what was that like? First of all, when you hear that it's number one somewhere, what does that do to you immediately? Are you just like, wow, I'm cool in Turkey? Like I, I don't know. I, I couldn't really believe it, to be honest. I, uh, so cool. I got a call from the radio station and uh, they said, you know, we're going to run this song four spins a day. Uh, and, and that's not heavy rotation by any means. And uh, 48 hours later, they called me and they said, it's our most requested song. It went to number one. And they sent me the, uh, it was pretty funny, they sent me the radio kind of snippet of it on the air. And it's this guy in Turkish talking about Rihanna and, and Diamonds was really big over there at that point. And then right after Diamonds, you know, he in my the Turkish accent saying my name was just really funny. And then, and then my song comes on. I just couldn't believe it. Oh my God. Yeah, it was an awesome feeling. Have you ever been in the car and your, and your song played on the radio? or anything has, has that ever happened um well when i was in turkey i uh i was there and i yeah that did happen a couple times oh. the first time i heard it on the radio was in turkey i went there in august and uh, it actually re-entered the charts at number two when i got there which was great and uh but yeah in america i've heard it as well on the radio but i always knew that it was coming you know because it was a scheduled interview or something yeah. but in turkey i heard it you know by surprise which was awesome that's amazing yeah. you'll never i feel like that moment you'll remember forever yes no matter how many hits you have in the yeah. future this is your it's the first one it's the first one ever will always be really sentimental to you that's that's so cool okay so the music video is awesome we loved it i i, I thought it was awesome and then she's gorgeous obviously yeah. so what are you thinking for upcoming what like what what can you tell us what can we know for your fans like is there going to be some more music videos coming out do you have any more singles you're going to release um right now i'm in this process of obviously i just got here yes i, was in studio, I know i'm already uh, like what's going on come on right <laughs> i know it's crazy well once i finish unpacking all my boxes um i was in the studio yesterday already so that was fantastic awesome. um tracking some really interesting songs yeah um those won't be out for a while, sadly, but right now I'm in a process of a and and working with different producers and, uh, you know, amazing production camps that Reindeer has introduced me to. So I'm very excited about that. Um, also working with Nephew, he worked with Michael Jackson. So I'm doing that, I think, tomorrow or the next cool. day. And uh, I'm just very excited. Right now it's all about creating music. I have a lot of songs on my computer that are unreleased uh, that I'm going to go through with everybody over at Reindeer once again and kind of A&R them and see what we want to do if there's one that we think is a marketable single to put out soon. Uh, and then of course, if we do have the music, then we'll shoot a music video. If I could wave my magic wand <laughs> and give you any person in the world that you could collaborate musically with right at this very moment, who would it be? Dr. Luke. Yeah? 100%. Cool. Above and beyond Dr. Luke. Why? He's just, uh, well, he's just, I really love his sound. Uh, a lot of the big artists that he works with, uh, if you don't know Dr. Luke, he works with Miley Cyrus, no, Katy Perry, yeah, no. Britney Spears, uh, everybody. And he's just had incredible success. I think he's a very, very, very smart guy. He has a great camp of writers and producers underneath him that all create amazing material. And I look up to the artists that he has helped break in the past you know, couple of years. And so he's somebody that I really want to work with. What about music, like a musician wise, if you could collaborate with the musician? Uh, collaborating with a musician? Um, maybe Will I Am cool. or, oh, or totally. Miley Cyrus. I see that. I just think she's cool. She, Miley's awesome. She's so cool. She's just, really. Cool. I don't know. She's just awesome. I want to party like, with her. I know. I want to party with Miley. This. Like, yeah, I kind of. 
Let's go. It'll be fun. We'll find. We'll, we'll, we'll hang out. We'll do something with her. She's she's. You got to do a music video with her. I know. I know. I really. I, mean, I really. Come do. on. Yeah, That'd like be awesome. Some cake and some. I know. I don't know what she'll do to you though. <laughs> Who knows what she'll have you hanging it, from? It, it doesn't be matter. <laughs> yeah, exactly. She can do whatever she wants. It's all right. It's all right. She can do whatever she wants. So um. But yeah, I think it'd be cool. That'd be awesome. Yeah, love to do something with her. Who was your first musical inspiration, or what was the first music that? You, you were like, oh my God, I want to do that. You know, I guess the first thing that really started stuff off for me was, um, do you know that record Save the World Tonight by Swedish House Mafia? I probably do if you sang it to me or if you like played <laughs> yeah. it, but I, I'm not good with names and I'm not good with titles right. of songs. I, w I would sing it, but I don't know if you can tell my voice is all uh, messed that, up right now. You don't now. have to sing it, it's okay, but, but I'm uh, sure I do. If right, it's really, is it popular? Very, very okay, popular. Then I probably and do. it was also a, a number one on, uh, I think it was number one Billboard Hot 100, but also the Hot 100 Dance. Okay. So it was kind of one of the first um, ever big EDM crossover records that became mainstream popular. And uh, I remember just hearing the song and being like, wow, that is dynamite. I love it. And, um, you know, the big vocal hooks and the breakdown and everything was fantastic. And I was in a nightclub and I started singing along to the song and suddenly I realized, like, I can really hit those notes. Uh, and then I kind of understood that, that I could maybe do this as a career and started thinking, who can I work with? How can I get to Swedish House Mafia? How can I get to the DJs? And how can I make this happen? So it really became a passion of mine after hearing that song and kind of realizing that, um, that I could sing it, you know, properly. Awesome. Yeah. That's so cool. Uh -huh. I love that. What did your friends think and your, and your family think when you said, you know what, I'm going to be a singer? They did you kind of just say that one day? Well, yeah, I kind of just did. You it, did. It was interesting. Um, <laughs> Everything in the entertainment industry is sort of new to my family. Uh, nobody's a singer or actor or anything like that. So when I said, I'm going to go be a model, they were pretty shocked. Um, and then when I said, I'm going to vocal coaching right now, my parents were sort of like, why are you going to see a vocal coach? I don't understand what, what you're doing. Um, and, and it was interesting. They were kind of distant from everything and sort of, you know, go and have fun. And as long as you get good grades, we don't really mind what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And suddenly my music video is on MTV and, and they're like, oh, you have a music video? That's so cool. I had, I had no idea that you did music. You know, it was crazy. So That's amazing. Uh, they were sort of always there and always supportive, but uh, very much so didn't know really what was going on until very recently. Um, and now, of course, my mom and dad and stepdad, they're very involved in my music and they're always rooting for me. And, you know, they call me every day and they're always excited. What are you doing today? Who are you recording with? Um, so... They're always very supportive. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. That's so cool. I mean, I think you need that. It's, 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 you do. This is not an easy place do. to live and to be pursuing what you're pursuing. You For have sure. to have a thick skin. Yeah. Support The support is... is, is yeah. you got to really have good people around you, you know, people who you love, yes. friends, family that want to support you and take care of you. Um, you know, your team, everything. I wouldn't be anywhere today if it wasn't for all of these different people hustling for me so hard. Uh, on a daily basis, it's just incredible right. uh, what they were able to achieve uh, thus far with very little resources. So it's pretty cool. I love it. Yeah. How do you how do you manage being young, being good looking? You know, just moving to LA. I know you only been here a few days, but anywhere that you, whether it's New York or wherever, how do you manage to deal with peer pressure and deal with people? You, you know that maybe you know your lot of friends maybe they party and you you know you're, you're so focused. Right. So how do you do that? while still maintaining friendships and social and a social life of some sort? Right. Um, well, it can be difficult. Um, you know, since being in L.A. has been difficult to see certain people, for sure. But I kind of will allocate time for work and then time for partying and friends. You've got to do everything in moderation. And in terms of peer pressure, just be who you are. And if you have to work, then uh, tell them that. And a lot of my friends are in the industry and they work in music or YouTube or acting or whatever it is. So. Everyone's driven and focused and, you know, excited and passionate about what they do. So when I have a friend of mine and they'll be like, yo, Nick, I got to go to bed. I can't come out with you tonight. Then I totally understand because I know that I want them to succeed and I know that they're doing something fun. And if I said to them that I needed to go to bed early, they would totally understand. Um, that being said, we try to plan maybe one day a week or one day every two weeks where we can just go nuts, which is fun. Um, so I might, you know, try to take uh, maybe Sunday off or something like that. But I I'm not sure right now. Yeah. Um, but once again, when you love what you do and you're passionate about what you do every day, it's so much fun, uh, you know, to get up and, and work because it's not work. 
you know, going to the studio and singing and writing a song and being creative or, you know, running around and meeting interesting people that are in the industry is, is something that I, that I love to do. Yeah, I think yeah. it's very important, like you said, not to say that you can't have friends that aren't doing anything, but it, is, it does get difficult mm. when you have friends that don't have jobs or they don't have anything going on because they take it personal Absolutely. when they're not seeing you as often. And so it, it is a lot easier to have friends that are also hustling themselves because sure. they understand. Yeah, and, and, and as well, and your friends it. really reflect on you. So if you're hanging out with a bunch of, you know, a really bad crowd, then it's going to look like you're also into those things. And, uh, you know, you know that. well, it, I mean, it's I, very I mean, true I mean, for sure. Yeah. I mean, you know, and, and, it, and it is true. Like if you're hanging out with a crowd that's going out all the time and, and, you know, getting up to no good late at night and everything else, you're probably also doing that because, you know, if you're always with them, then you're probably being influenced by what they say and do, um, you know, but also it's difficult to find somebody who's intellectually stimulating and exciting and driven and motivating and actually has something to talk about who does nothing. Because you ask them, you know, what did you do today? And they're like, oh, I, I went to the club. I'm really hungover. I'm excited to go clubbing again tonight. That, that's about it. I don't, I don't like being around people like that. I want to be around someone who is exhausted. And they're like, wow, I got up and I had an interview. And then I went to the studio and I'm shooting this movie. And I'm, I'm really excited. And then I got to go do, you know, costume fittings. And that's exciting for me. Because uh, like they have a project and they have a passion. And you can feel that when they talk and when they're in the room. You can just feel like that passion and that love for whatever they do radiating out of them and then that you know transcribes to you which is really really exciting it is it is and speaking of people you're around if you uh, a lot of girls are gonna want me to ask you <laughs> and I, I, I'm going to ask yeah. so what do you look for in a girl what do you look for in a companion um, well uh, kinda like I just said it's like it's the same you thing, gotta right? find yeah. you gotta find a girl who has something going on you know uh, I've, I've been with a bunch of girls who don't have much going on and it's fun because they can kind of come around with you and they can travel with you and, and your schedule can be their schedule. But if, they're, if they have any type of brain, after about two or three weeks, they get really bored of that, you know, and they want to have their own projects and their own things to pursue. So I like girls that are driven, that are motivated, that are exciting. Um, I generally prefer brunettes over blondes, to be perfectly honest, listen, which I, listen, good I, thing I, for I, you. I do. Yeah. Okay, I do. I do. Your, you're asking your brunettes me, as well? Well, you were asking. Oh, I thought, yeah, well, oh, I thought you were asking me. Well, no, I was going to say, well, we should go Oh, I thought you were asking me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay, okay, never mind. Yeah. <laughs> Took that to another level. <gasps> okay, <laughs> so, but I love that. And I think that that's why you're... I think that's why relationships last or don't last is because right. the of other course. person just doesn't yes. have anything going on and they exactly. and exactly. then they want more time with you and they they take it personal. It's the same thing with friends. I say that whoever you look for, whatever you look for in your friends, you're going to look for it in your companion. It's just yeah. it's the same thing. There's no difference. Yeah. Really at the end and of the can, day, they be become difficult. your best friend. Exactly. Well, exactly. It's sort of like I mean, I guess the best girlfriend you could have, it's like really your best friend, but like obviously that you're romantically involved with. Um, and so that's great and Sometimes it, it can be difficult, me being so driven and traveling all the time and things like that because, you know, there have been relationships I've had in the past where it's like no matter how much you love her, you can't, you know, always have her with you or she's got to go do her own thing or, yeah. or the whole thing. So, I mean, but, but it's totally fine and, and, and you live and you learn and, and you go through different things and, and it always works. You just do what feels good and, and yeah. 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 And I think it's good that you're focusing more on on this part of your life, the music part, because everything right. else will fall into place when there's time. Right. It's, it's really, at this point, it's better that you don't even have right. that happen. Well, I mean, it's sort of like girls right now. It's girls get moody. <laughs> you know? I mean, you know, I'm a girl, but I don't mean to be a traitor to girls, but you know, it's, it's easier to just it's, focus I mean, on yourself right now. It's definitely difficult to be, you know, with a girl who's needy. That's for sure. But that being said, um, you know, once this very intense period of work is over, hopefully, you know, I can kind of settle down and, and, you know, find a nice girl who's who's also driven and has her own projects, but we still have time for each other, you know. Where do you see yourself in 10 years then, speaking of settling down and at some point? I don't know. In 10 years, I want to be, I don't know. I really don't know. Anything can happen. Obviously, I want to have a very successful music career. I want to do a lot of philanthropic work. I want uh, all my friends and family to come live with me in a big house. I love being around people. I hate being alone. You do? I hate being alone. So um, I want to live in a big house and have everybody that I love live with me. 
And um, I love that. And yeah, that would be that would be kind of a dream, and just be able to inspire people and make people happy and make people the best that they can be. Because I don't know, that's sort of a very special thing that I have currently with my you know fan base is I, I really want to lift them up and motivate them and uh, inspire them to just be happy and you know, things will always get better for you and know that they're always in control of, of your own life and your own destiny. Everything around you, you've chosen. Um, you know, if you want to go and be a singer and you follow that path, suddenly, you know, like I did many years ago, suddenly you end up here. And I'm, I'm not in New York at a, at a bank or, or somewhere else at a job, but, you know, if I was to look around and say, I do want to be at a bank or, or I want to go and do something else, which, which obviously I wouldn't. But, um, you know, it's sort of like you're current life is a product of the things that you have worked at creating right now. So you're definitely in control of, of changing everything if you want. And, uh, and just to know that and do whatever makes you happy and kind of follow your passion and follow your heart. You're such a great influence for your fans and I'm sure a lot of parents of, of younger girls that, that love you and look up to you, I'm sure they're happy to, to know that their daughters are listening to your music versus, or, or sons, you know, versus a lot of music that it, it just, it doesn't really I hate to say, but you know, like it might talk about things that you don't want to have your kids really knowing about at this point. You're you're really saying take life, you know, do what you want to do. Yes. You, you know, feel inspired. You can do whatever you want. You can conquer whatever you want. And you are so. I've never seen any. I've interviewed a lot of people and I've met a lot of people that have a huge fan base that they, you know, they'll answer people here and there. You go out of your. I mean, you find the time to even direct message your fans. Yeah. I found that so every day. insane. It's not like you're just sitting around all day. No, every day. Unbelievable. What what told what is it inside of you that says I I want to have this intimate relationship with my fans? Like is it is it, just, is it appreciation for them? Is it more like you you know that it makes them feel good to know that you're answering them and you actually care? What is it? It must be a Well, I I just I just feel that when you know, something that brought me to music was this idea that you can put your emotions and your personality into a song and then spread that to people and make them feel the same way. And so creating happiness is one of the most rewarding things anyone can ever do. Um, I love this quote. It's sort of like, uh, there's no better feeling than seeing a smile on somebody's face and knowing that you put it there. And so as an artist, if you have the power and you have the fan base to go outside and inspire people and create happiness just by favoriting a tweet or you know mentioning them or responding to their message sometimes it can make people's day and if you have the ability to go and do that and to connect with someone and to make their day better then that's an incredible gift and you should share that with as many people as you can um, obviously you get hundreds of messages sometimes so I try to sort of I'll usually respond uh, usually when I'm in the gym or uh, at night before I'm going to go to bed or in the morning when I first wake up, I kind of will allocate times of the day where I'll just sit for an hour and, and speak to people. But, um, but, you know, and it's really meaningful. You get beautiful messages from fans from all over the world and, you know, they tell you stories about how you've inspired them, how you've helped them deal with situations in their life. And, and it's really moving. There's nothing better than to know that you're helping somebody um, either accomplish a goal or you're helping them get through something that's difficult for them on an emotional level. It's just so rewarding. And uh, so I make their days sometimes, and a lot of the times they make my day every day. You know, and it, it's, it's really encouraging, you know, the support yeah. and to have them be behind you and know that they're, you know, rooting for you and they want you to, to go and to succeed. And, and then you also want to succeed for them in a sense to help make them happy and continue bringing them joy and also uh, bring joy to as many people as you can in the world. I, I think that's wonderful. I, I know for me, I, I have three texts and I'm like, I got to throw my phone out the window. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm going crazy. I just, I yeah. can't take it. I, that's how I, I don't know how you deal. I, mm -hmm. I mean, I'm me, I'm not popular. So I don't know how you deal. <laughs> I would be out of my mind if I were you, but that is, that's why you are where you are because you do love the, you know, doing all of this Yes. To really, you know, inspire people. Yeah. So I think we should take the time now. Did you want to answer a few of your fans? I yeah, mean, I was, I was going to say, should I? Yeah, I think you should. Okay. I've got some. Uh, <laughs> let me see what goes on here. Make someone's day. Let's see. Speaking well, of that. I can do some shout outs. I tweeted yeah, some, out. uh, yeah. some hashtags with do Ask it. Nick. So uh, let's see. Make sure you Ask Nick. This is from. Make sure you go a little bit more into the, just oh. to make sure. That Sorry, this is from. Uh, Magna, and she says, Ask Nick, do you remember your first fan interaction and describe how it was? It was interesting. The first time I ever interacted with a fan was years and years ago. And um, 
it's interesting. We actually have this relationship now where um, she calls me Kuya and I call her Bunso. And that's oh kind of God. like a brother-sister relationship, uh, you know, where she's from. And so that was one of the first fans that I remember really interacting with. And, uh, where was that? Uh, well, that was just over Twitter. And I remember I went to Paris uh, for a performance in November and she loves the Eiffel Tower. So she said, can you take a picture of you standing in front of the Eiffel Tower? And I did, and she responded, and she said, that's fantastic, they're my two favorite things in the world, next to Aww. each other. So that was a, a very, that's very, so very moving. That's so sweet. Very moving. Oh my gosh, shout out to, to her. I know, it was, it was fantastic. Um, let's see, what else? Cats or dogs, obviously dogs. If you follow me on Instagram, it's clearly dogs. Um, I have a cat that is a dog. Oh, back really? In Boston, it's a dog in a cat's body. Oh yeah, it's insane. It's crazy. Really? Some crazy shit. My That's last dog cool. was gay too. Oh really? Yeah, he was. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Yeah, he had a lot of boyfriends. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that was that was possible it, for it's dogs. It's possible. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> you should come over. You should some crazy. Sh <laughs> um, okay, let's see. This one is from Hack. Um, she said, "At Nick Hissem, who is your favorite YouTuber?" Uh, I think this will be pretty obvious too. It's obviously Casper Lee, um, or Joe Sugg, either one. Uh, let's see. What's the most outrageous thing you've ever done? From Five Seconds of Summer Family, Yuli193. Uh, I think one of the most outrageous things I've ever done, I had to break into my own house one time, uh, which was interesting. And I was Why? on the second floor. Well, I was in London and I'd locked my keys outside. Oh, so I could see my bedroom window and I knew it was open. So I knew if I could just get there, I would, I would figure it out. Yeah, right. Anyway, um, we had uh, some security guy on our, on our block come over and, you know, more or less thought I was trying to really break into the house. And I had to go through this whole process of, no, this is really my house. And, and you know, and I didn't have ID on me because my wallet was inside and I was locked out. So, you know, almost got into a lot of trouble there. But uh, that was that was pretty daring of me I gotta say to climb up two stories um, yeah with with like the concrete below and stuff that is so, really scary yeah it was a little dangerous but yes that was fun that was fun <laughs> it good was times fun. good times it was good times it was good might times. be a good idea for a music video showing you breaking like, back into my own yeah house. like something like that yeah just climb or just like climbing a building or something yeah. I don't know some like yeah James Bond I've been locked stuff. out of my hotel room too a bunch of times that's uh, that's the worst because you, if you put your key card next to your cell phone mm -hmm. it immediately deactivates it and then you're stuck yeah, Forever. I have been, I have been locked out so many different times, and usually not wearing that many clothes, and it's always, you know, it's always hard. Don't but, tell your fans that. Now they're gonna follow well, you and wait. And for I know. You. Right now it's gonna be oh like, okay, God. if you wait outside the whole way, yeah, maybe I'll lock myself out be and, be, naked, and be yeah. running around naked. But yeah. Um, but luckily, there's a sort of emergency phone right out outside of my room. Um, I guess they're used to it by now, and they're like, we should put a phone here for him. Outside of your apartment? <laughs> outside of my, uh, in, in the hotel when oh. I stay there. Luckily, <laughs> luckily I have a phone oh my right God, outside my room, know. so <laughs> they kind of know. <laughs> and, uh, and I'll call them up, be like, it's me again. Lock myself out again. Uh, can you come hilarious. let me in? So. Oh, my God. They'll be like, I can't believe it. Oh, my God, Nick. Yeah, you it's are pretty crazy. Funny. Oh, my gosh. Um, let's see what else. Uh, just reading through a couple of these. Where was your first kiss from Sabrina Castro? So my first kiss was, I think I was six or seven years old, behind the trees in the playground in London, England. And it was, it was pretty fun. I don't know. I mean, when you're little, you know, yeah. you think you're going to get married and, and mm -hmm. be together forever. And, yep. and uh, so, yeah, I was at a school called Thomas's Battersea. That was, it was interesting. That is interesting. It was cute, though. I remember, you know, yeah. all those little things are, I love that. are sweet to remember. You I know? love that. Being little, being in the playground, you know, it's all all secret. Everyone's like, oh, my God, they're yep. behind the tree. Like, what are they doing back there? You know, it's this big drama. Um, <laughs> that was all a lot right. of fun. That's really cool. Yeah. Do you want to answer one more? Uh, let's see. One more. Let me go through a couple of these. Who's the lucky one? Drum roll, please. I don't know why their name isn't coming up, but this is pretty funny. Would you go on stage naked for $10,000 for charity? Hmm. Hmm. I don't know. You said philanth philanthropy. Philanthropy. Uh, I mean, at some point, depends on. I don't know, like fully, fully naked. I guess they didn't like specify, you know. I mean, underwear I think would be fine. Oh, underwear, fine. That's that's no big deal. Yeah. Do I do I have to go on like fully naked like this, or can I be like? You I don't know. know. Like, I guess I don't you'd know. have to really find out the details. Tell I them have to, to get the to details. Give you the details. I'll, I'll tweet her back. I'll yeah, be like, yeah. Give me the details. Yeah. Like, do I have? Is it like a? Can I like try to cover some stuff? Or right, just, right, just right. Well, out. Tommy Hilfiger underwear. I mean, you could do a little ad, but I mean, right. I, I wouldn't do the whole. Yeah. 
That could possibly um, ruin your. Yeah, but but you know, <laughs> yeah, maybe I, I would consider it. You know, for charity. It's for, for charity, yeah, exactly. Who's gonna? No one's gonna hate you for that. Right. No exactly. one's gonna knock you for that. Exactly. Well, Nick, thank you so much for coming in today. Thank you very much. Where can your fans talk to you and and, and direct message you and hang out with you and every? What, what's your what's your Twitter handle and your um, Instagram? Twitter channel? handle is at Nick Hissom. Just my name N I C K H I S S O M one word. And same thing on Instagram. And I have uh, Facebook, same name, everything is, is the same across all my channels. So yeah, Facebook, your website is YouTube, my website, nickhism.com, uh, my YouTube channel, I think it's Nick Hism Official on YouTube. Okay. Not 100% sure, actually. But um, I, think it's, yeah. I think it is. I think you're but, right, actually. <laughs> yeah, I hope I'm right. But uh, but yeah, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, um, I'm around. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Awesome. It was really, really, really fun. I was really fun. I hope you come back throughout your journey. Yes. We'll, we'll continue this. We'll find out what else is going on with you. We'll keep in touch. It'll be awesome. So thank you so much. I'm Ashley Daniels. You can find me on Twitter at Miss Ashley Daniels and Instagram at Miss Ashley Daniels. Have a great day. Thank you. From executive producers Maria Menunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz, Buzz you, later. you later. The views expressed herein are those of the host only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principal. Thank you for watching AfterBuzz TV on YouTube. For more of your favorite after shows and interviews, subscribe to our channel here and be sure to share your opinion on the episode in the comment section below here. We'd love to see what you guys are buzzing about. Thanks again. Buzz you later.